the nature island of the Caribbean. This is Dominica, a windward island in the Lesser Antilles, not to be confused with the Dominican Republic. It is said that if Christopher Columbus rose from the dead and returned to visit countries he once found, he would only recognize Dominica today as it retains its rugged natural beauty. Waitikibuli is its native name, which means tall is her body, describing Dominica's mountainous character, full of jungle wilderness, volcanoes, and rugged coastline. Richard Taylor, my friend, has been on a quest to visit every country in the world. One place he returns to frequently is Dominica. He brought me along to document the island during a three-day trip. Our first day, we visited a local charity he is fond of supporting, Feed My Sheep, located in Mahut, just north of the capital of Rousseau, and run by Pastor Lena Augustine. Wow. So, you're back in sunny island, the beautiful Dominica. Oh, and of course, these are a few of the kids that we mentor. Very honored to serve them. It's like a royal job. I feel honored to serve the orphans. It's an honor. Yeah, it's an honor to serve these children. I grew up in a family of mission. My grandfather was born in Africa. and was sold as a slave in America. And then he came to the emancipation as a young man and he was sold to the British. And then the British sold him to a farm in Delhi. That's where he opened, he got the permission from the queen to open the village. And so I come from a family that we learn how to survive and to serve. And so it's in my blood. I'm Lena Augustine, born and raised in Delhi, in a beautiful village close to heaven. From there, I moved to um, Canada to further my education. I was raised with missionaries, um, local and um, foreign. So I have a mixed background. And from there, I moved to Canada, um, where I was trained in horticulture, the Horticulture and Herbal College and Theology, and came back to Dominica to further a work that I love to do, which is mission, in taking care of kids, children, the, ki the children, we took care of them and raised them up and prepared them for a better tomorrow. I've done that for many years and it brings me great satisfaction and joy. It's um, really rewarding, no, no words can describe the joy when you rescue someone from catastrophe, like from suicide, from the street, and then we take them from little, we watch them grow up till they reach a stage where they could be so independent, having their own farm, their own homes. Some have their master's degree, some become doctors, lawyers, doesn't matter what, but the point is that they're off the street and they learn to be secure. And um, I take great joy in doing this kind of work. Yes, Liz is one of my precious daughters. Come on, Liz. She's one pillar in the work. And um, she's a tough cookie to work with. And I love her. <laughs> the reason why I'm involved in Feed My Sheep is because I enjoy working with people. I enjoy seeing people move from one stage in their life to the next. and develop from one challenge and overcome the challenge and become positive people who can give back to society. I remember when you first met me? Oh yeah, I remember. We then headed to the Trafalgar Falls with Liz acting as our guide. This is the Trafalgar Falls. It's better known as the Twin Falls. It's one of the main tourist attractions in Dominica. This is the father and this is the mother. That's why it's called Twin. Two of them. It's our main tourist attraction. All tourists that come to Dominica, they want to come to visit the Trafalgar Falls. So I'm glad that you're here today to see what our Traf Trafalgar Falls is all about. There are a few changes after Tropical Storm America because we had a lot of hot springs, but it's no longer there and we have a lot more rocks. But it's still beautiful as you can see. So welcome to the Trafalgar Falls. We're good friends now. The first time she saw me, I looked a lot different. Yes, because of his hair. <laughs> his hair is all different. The first time I met him, he was 
all cut up short and stuff but when i saw him this time at the airport i almost did not recognize him but he's the same person with the same good heart so we still love him because of the same personality that he has and why do you do your hair like that richard um i do my hair like this i first had it done in cuba when i was visiting there over a year ago and uh, my hair is very very curly um, I had a brain hemorrhage four years ago and after that uh, my hair got really curly and um, I just like it and you know it's it's me being me and it's not hurting anybody so I kind of just went with it and it's important to be yourself you don't think he shocks everybody when he comes here no not really not really shocked we recognize the difference but we know that this, the same person is still exists. <laughs> so do you, do you just travel around the world and... Well, travel is my passion and my hobby. And um, people ask me, what's your favorite place you've been? And I would say the Caribbean is my favorite place to go. And I've been to all the continents, lots of countries, but I love coming to the Caribbean and thanks um, for coming to Dominica and, and Dominica is my favorite place to go in the Caribbean so the source of the Trafalgar Falls is this wind-swept foggy freshwater lake 2,500 feet in elevation it is the largest of all Dominica's lakes the vegetation around the lake is called montane forest small trees and brush full of moss the winds here are always strong, not permitting the larger trees to sink roots. Liz's friend, Brasco, a local taxi driver, brought us here. I asked him why this is called the Freshwater Lake. Because well, it's natural fresh water. It's water that comes from the Bori Lake and surrounding forest. So it's fresh, it's not salty at all. Yeah, all for marine fall. So how many you said, how many rivers are there in Dominica? I like to say approximately 365 rivers because I think there's more rivers when it rains very heavy. Like after Erica, there was so many rivers. <laughs> there's, so there's a river for every day. Yeah. Every day, yeah. <laughs> Choose one to bathe, right? Brasco about the origin of his unusual Brasco, name. He used to have a bracelet that we make in Dominica. From copper. It's made from copper. So it's good for when you have um, what we call, how do you call it? Um, Fuedi. Arthritis. Arthritis. But the local word is Fuedi. So you use it and it prevents you from getting pain. So he used to have it on his hand, but he used, when he was growing up as a young boy, he used to say it was bra um, gold. gold. He used to boast that he have gold. So his friends used to provoke him and tease him and say, no, that's brass. So, so that's it, how it, it goes. It began as like brass and then turned into brass gold. But you wear a gold plated watch now. Yeah. No more, no more brass. <laughs> so right now it should be gold coal. <laughs> the first time I met Brasco, I was like, yes. <laughs> If he didn't introduce himself to me, I wouldn't even have known he was one of our boys. And so his dad and mom and the family were part of it. And so I left him later. So now when he introduced and told me the name, he's like, wow, that's you. So he's one of us. In fact, as a child, Brasco was a student in Lena's yeah. early charity development program. She was friends with his parents and had not recognized Brasco as an adult until meeting him with us. That's who it is. Obviously, if you're friends with Feed My Sheep, you have some sort of faith. Yes. Is that fair to say? Definitely. And how's that worked out in your life? I know you said something earlier. You used to chase women. As uh, a, a young man like yourself. Well, the Bible makes says sense. seven times rise, seven times fall. <laughs> so you go through the phases and it's part of life. That's why God forgives, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So you chase seven women. No, I fell seven times <laughs> in different ways. 
Let's or see. isn't it 70 times 70? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you have it more right than me. Yeah. <laughs> so. You got something in common with Richard with the... Um... This style. <laughs> yeah, well, next time I'm going to do it like that. <laughs> I get different ideas. Yeah. As we drove to our next destination, we stopped to meet a local tourist shop owned by a Syrian, one of the few non-blacks in Dominica. His name is Isa Laflouf. How long have you had the store? I uh, for so far almost 17 years now. I have that here, you know. And it sometimes doing good. Yeah, sometimes doing good, you know. But you can, as long as you, can, you see, everything is hand handmade, you know. It is here. You don't see nothing made in China. <laughs> everything is a hundred percent handmade. Also, this is my my shop name. My name right here, Big Daddy. So that is Big Daddy. Big Daddy, you call me Big Daddy. I asked him where he's from. Normally, my grandfather from France, my grandmother from Italy, my father and my mother from Damascus, Syria. Syria. The way I born in Syria, you know? I asked Isa what he thought of the current political and religious situation in Syria. Very bad, my friend. Very, very bad, you know? This is that's why I tell you, you ask me the question if I'm a Muslim. This is Muslim is a troublemaker. So I don't want to be a Muslim. I am a Christian. Thanks God I'm a Christian, you know. So where the Christian is is nothing. Normal, 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 you know. All by the seaside is normal. Everything okay. When you come to the Christ to the to the Muslim side, terrible. No houses stand up, even animals dying, killing them, you know. No water, no food, nothing, nothing. One killing the other. Muslim killing Muslim, you know. This is very bad, my friend. Very, very bad, you know. When I came to Dominica as a young, young child, then I met a nice lady, I married to the lady, got five children, five grandchildren, and so far, it's going good. So this is, Dominica is a wonderful country, my friend. If you know, if you know how to, to go in life in Dominica, you can do it, you can make it. You have to be in it, you have to work hard, then you can live good. Yeah, you can live very, very good, you know. Five, five years is fifteen dollars, ten easy, no problem. Sure. Okay, uh, sir. Got it. Got it. Thank you. <coughs> You're welcome. And when I come back to Dominica, maybe next year, I'll come by and see you. If, if I still alive. Good. Got it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, my friend. Visiting Dominica felt like going back in time to an age of organic nature. I imagine my eyes were seeing the same terrain and vegetation as the early European explorers had seen 500 years ago. I imagined the great explorer Christopher Columbus sailing into Dominica on the date of his arrival, November 3, 1493. The rainforest volcanic island was too rugged for the Spaniards, so they left it alone to develop other Caribbean islands. It was not until 200 years later that the French began to settle the land, using so many slaves imported from Africa that the entire island population would become predominantly black. To feed so many slaves, the Europeans, with help of the infamous Captain Bly, imported breadfruit trees. It's a high starchy fruit. So the, the, even the name speaks for itself, bread, fruit. So on the plantation, it would just fill the slaves, and when it blooms or when it bears, it bears in a large quantity. So it was a perfect food for slaves in the end. But many slaves fiercely resisted, and these came to be known as maroons. The name was taken from blacks who escaped slave boats that were wrecked and marooned. These escapees would then hide out in the mountains. They resisted enslavement and rebelled against their slave owners, even unto death. So this is a monument of the Neg Maon, the runaway slave. Neg Maon means uh, runaway slave. So this is an example of Jacko, which is the one who uh, led the revolution. In the Jacko was Africa. the most famous maroon, an escaped slave who lived in the forests leading the resistance against slaveholders for 40 years until he was killed in a massive white we assault. We blow that for um, celebration and we even use that today in the carnival season. Eventually, in the 1800s, slavery was abolished and blacks enjoyed full freedom, 
even to the point of having their own government. This would not last, however, but you can see from several paintings of the Italian artist Agostino Brunius, who immigrated here at the time, the free movements and interracial harmony that then existed, such as his famous linen market paintings. Here is the first photograph of Dominica, taken in 1872, showing the market in Rousseau, the capital. It's clear that blacks far outnumbered whites and were free. However, there is another ethnic group on the island that was also deeply affected by the early explorers, the Kalinago Indians, the island's earliest inhabitants, once referred to as Caribs. These were originally from the Amazon basin and immigrated here by canoe in 1200 AD. They lived in small huts throughout the entire island when Columbus first arrived. Later, the Italian explorer Giovanni di Veranzano, whose namesake is the Veranzano Bridge in Manhattan, was killed and eaten by the Kalinago, who were feared to be cannibals. The word cannibal is actually derived from a corrupted pronunciation of Kalinago. It was thought the Kalinago were worshipping evil deities. The early European settlers tried to convert them. The British began to slaughter them. Eventually, British settlers forcibly relegated them to the northeast of the island in 1903, where they remain today. Here is a full-blooded Kalinago, Rene, our guide at the Kalinago Barana Ute, a reservation. I asked him if he believes his people were pushed here against their will. They did push us from the west, and we began to live mostly on the eastern part of this island. So what do you think about that? Does your people feel like they have a right to the western part of the island? I believe that we believe, I believe that we believe that the entire, even today, the entire island still belongs to us. Even though we've been forced to live in this little area called the Kalingo territory, but still, we still believe, even today, we say like Dominica, White Tukubuli is ours. When many of the treaties were made by the British and so forth, like, for example, the Treaty of, of the Aisha Plain, for example, our people were not involved in the agreement where he said that basically the island would be left for my people. Now, how do we involve in that part of it? We have a right to say, okay, guys, you know what? Hear the treaty, we have a copy of it. He all said to leave this island belongs to us, so please get off, because we have a treaty, all signed and agreed by all parties. This may have had one positive outcome, and that this is the only place in the world where there exists a community of pure-blooded Kalinago Indians some 3,000 live here today, and still calling the island Waitikibuli instead of Dominica. They are semi-autonomous, electing their own chief for governance, 14 since 1903. So far, only 14 men have become chiefs here in the territory. No woman yet, only men, okay? Right there. I then asked our guide about the legacy of the age of the explorers and the European settlers. What they did in terms of what they wanted was that they, they wanted to Christianize my people. And the whole thing of that, of course, my people resisted the whole thing of, of colonization. And so they would kill off many of my people. And only that too, the men he brought along with him and the people he brought along with them sexually harassed the women and children, cut off the men's ears, women's breasts, and so forth. Not everything brought along was bad, because some things he brought here to the islands, even today we still use them. For example, everything of metal, cut glasses and so forth, we brought to the islands. We use them to advantage in many ways. Like even today, like we use them for like, to clear the garden, Cut trees and so forth to clear the area. Um, uh, we, are, we here have somehow learned to adapt and to adopt the whole thing of Christianity. Alright? Um, that, along with 
our own way of religion had this sort of little battle or the conflict even today. Some people are saying like it's working on paganism, it's calling on, on the demons. Some will say, well, it's part of our culture, tradition, our heritage. So there's nothing wrong in accepting um, Christianity along with what we, what we have. But that we shouldn't forget as to who we are and what our ancestors went through to keep us alive even today. So not everything that was brought over from the Spanish people or from the various Europeans, whether it was Spanish, French, or British, um, is all bad. I mean, yes, he did, he did many wrong things on the islands, but also, there are some things which, of course, we also accepted as well, as a people. Like the Maroons, the Kalinago resisted the Europeans, and because of the rugged land, were able to hide and survive. These two groups, the Maroons and Kalinago, helped each other. This painting by Agostino Brunius shows the blacks in Kalinago assisting each other. My people have always believed in one thing, freedom. When the Africans came to the islands in the 1760s, my own people would risk their lives to free many of the Africans on the ships and as well as from the sugarcane plantations. Because why? Belief in freedom, right? And of course, the old thing of what we call what we now call what we, call, what we now call the Garifuna people emerged because of intermarrying the Africans and my people. So after we freed them, or when they escaped from the from the plantations, and we rescued them, we showed them basically how to survive. <coughs> These are different herbs, what to do, what not to do, and so forth. So yes. So who are these Garafana or Black freedom. Caribs? The entire island is a mix of blacks in Kalinago. Rousseau is where the majority live. Office of the President, currently occupied by Charles Saverin, who from my conversations with locals is well loved. Welcome to Morn Bruce in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Morn Bruce is the site of a garrison on a small mountain overlooking Rousseau. Here we met our guide for the day, Samuel Fontaine. It was once a major defensive garrison built by the British to defend against French invaders. It was an ideal spot to defend the city of Rousseau. Its elevation provided good viewing and tactical advantage of arriving ships. The French did occupy the island for about a hundred years prior to the British. The French indelibly left their Catholic faith. Today, Catholicism is the majority religion on the island. Now we are looking at a monument there, which is called the Catholic Belle Croix. The cross itself was introduced by the Catholics. The Methodists were there in the 17th century, while the Catholics came in the 18th century. And the cross is synonymous, it's unique to Catholics, because a lot of the Catholics people, they would gather here before the churches was built in 1854. You had the Catholics would come here to have their services as well. On the way south of the city, we stopped at the Champagne Reef, known for its bubbly warm ocean snorkeling. Champagne Reef Dive and Snorkel is owned and operated by Clem Johnson, my husband, and myself, Lucy Johnson. Mm. 
Dominica is a, is a volcanic island and of course some of that is seen in our ocean floor. So thus we have the champagne bubbles. It fits in with the theme um, of the island, very natural. Nature at its best. I encourage, I would encourage anybody to come to Champagne to witness uh, something that is not seen anywhere else uh, much in the world where we have the Champagne bubbles in an area where they are during the sun, during the sunlight when it's out where the bubbles they look like floating diamonds and you know it's it's something that you have to experience for yourself seeing it on the camera wouldn't justify it but uh, it's something that you would have to experience for yourself so you say it's like floating diamonds yes you actually get that impression that they, they look like floating diamonds in the water Tons of different uh, coral life, over 100 species of different fish. We have turtles passing through, we have stingrays, electric rays, we have a whole heap of stuff. So, this is the island, this is the spot for snorkeling. So, to everybody who's gonna watch this documentary, you know, come down to Champagne, come visit Dominica, you're gonna have a fun. Leaving here, we headed further south to the southernmost tip of the island, Scott's Head. We're looking at the Atlantic Ocean right now, which is facing the country, the French territory of Martinique. And the Caribbean, it faced the territory of Guadeloupe and Marigolant. So that's where the two seas meet. It is also two fishing communities, like their twin communities, the community of Scottshead and the community of Soufre. They are known for fish. From Scottshead looking north along the Caribbean Sea is the town of Soufre. This is the handmade church in the town. Above the town is a cliff visible in this image. It is the site of Witch's Point. It is said that this area is haunted by the ghosts of women who were thrown off the cliff into the ocean to die for their sins. This peak here is Witch's Point. A long time ago, we had the Caribs living in, on, in this area and when the wife cheated on them, the husband and the whole village just threw them down. If townspeople caught women in adultery or even inappropriate behavior like kissing, they would be tossed to their death as cheaters. As the women fell the hundreds of feet into the rocky ocean, the villagers could hear their screams, which are said to still be heard today. Finally, before leaving Dominica, we said our goodbyes to Lena at the Feed My Sheep charity. So these are jewels, and that's honestly true because the world, people sometimes highlight um, stars, like people who can perform, and these people overlook. The village runs by jewels. And that's why I wanted you to see my village. We run by jewels, people that just devote themselves to taking care of the community. Okay, and I made a little poem like this. This then is the community. The women who keep the home a well-adjusted and clean home. The, Women with such bright eyes, they hold all the pain and all the pain of the generations. The, the grandfather, he looked like Sir Saints and he can renounce the way of Christ. He sits with the children, resting on the shadows of the walls. The narrow strips of field around the valley floor. Life giving fertile, spots amidst the barren land. Watered the husbandman with care. It's a hard place for a man to shape. It's a hard place for a community to live, but there's a feeling and a strength that holds you and keeps you back. This then is the community. And whether you like it or not, you are devoted. It's like you're compelled to do the good things. It's like you have to care for them. And that's how I know it as a community. You have no choice. Your neighbor is sick, you gotta run. You gotta do something, you know? And that's how we run the community. So they're jewels because there's a, there's a feeling and a strength that compels you.
Chaira, and we're gonna be in the choir. We're gonna sing when he cometh. It's going like this. One, two, three. When he cometh, when he cometh, to take up his jewels, all the jewels, precious jewels, his love and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright ones adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright jewels for his crown. He will gather, he will gather, bright jewels for his kingdom, all the bright ones, all all the pure ones, his love and his own. It's like the stars of the morning, his bright ones are dawning. They shall shine in their beauty, bright jewels for his own.